ever wondered how a simple vitamin can play the role of a hormone or how does it impact everything from bone health to immune function? Well, today we are here to shed light on these questions as we explore the captivating world of vitamin D, a new hormone in the blood. But first, allow me to introduce our esteemed guest, Dr. Rahul Desai, a diabetologist at Advanced Diabetes Care, Walsad. With his insights, we'll unfold the mysteries behind this remarkable molecule and its implications for our health. Welcome, Dr. Rahul. It's a pleasure to have you here with us today. Thank you so much, Dr. Harshita, for the kind introduction. It's an absolute pleasure being here and looking forward to a very fruitful and uh, insightful conversation with you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Rahul. Uh, so let's begin our session. So, Dr. How has the recognition of vitamin D as a hormone influenced our understanding of its broader impact beyond bone health? Uh, so vitamin D, as we also call it the sunshine hormone, uh, it's basically a secosteroid vitamin essential for mineral and calcium absorption and bone mineralization in the body. And it has a very positive association with the bone mineral density. That is what essentially it has been for so many years. But now with more research and more population studies being done, the role of vitamin D has slightly enhanced to a stage of being a pro-hormone or even in some cases a hormone. Uh, now what we've found is uh, that throughout the body it regulates various functions and not just the bone mineral density. Uh, the lack of vitamin D has been associated uh, with your ability to fight infections, with muscle weakness, with development of diabetes, with certain cancers as well and uh, heart disease, blood pressure, stroke, all of them. But the relation at this point is extremely loose and not well understood. But hopefully with more research and more an, uh, analysis of uh, the data, we'll probably come to a more clearer standpoint. Uh, now, what has happened is uh, earlier we studied vitamin D as something of a bone vitamin. Now we found close to 36 cells in the body that utilize vitamin D for their functions. And uh, earlier, skin and uh, kidneys used to be the primary organs involved with the synthesis of vitamin D. But now at this point, again, close to nine uh, other organs have been found to have cells that are important not only in the synthesis of vitamin D along its original pathway, but also in newer pathways uh, which have not been understood before. So a lot of research is being done and like I said, it's not only as a hormone, but also as a pro-hormone. Vitamin D is taking center stage, but it's a slow process as of now. Yes, Dr. Rahul, it's interesting to know and it has indeed broadened our understanding of the complex interplay between vitamin D and various physiological processes. Now, Doctor, could you elaborate on the interaction between vitamin D, bone health and its complex role in modulating bone remodeling and mineral homeostasis? Correct. Now, this is, uh, this is probably the most widely studied role of vitamin D. Uh, and this is something that I, won't, I don't want to touch upon too much because it has already been understood and being documented in various textbooks and journals altogether. Uh, so now vitamin D along with uh, calcium, uh, calcitonin and parathyroid hormone forms a, a quadrant of elements that are extremely essential in your bone mineral density as well as in your uh, calcium metabolism of, in the body. Now vitamin D uh, so far we've, what we've understood is that it is an adjuvant uh, to other hormones and to calcium itself in strengthening your bone structure as well as maintaining a solid uh, bone mass density the lack of which could cause multiple uh, disorders like it could cause rickets in kids in older ages it could cause osteomalacia osteoporosis all of these things but again this is something that i don't want to touch upon too much because it's widely studied and even if you google the word vitamin d you will find lots of literature on this subject doctor so uh, moving ahead can you discuss the emerging insights into the relationship between vitamin D levels and the prevention or progression of metabolic syndromes like type 2 diabetes? Now this is where it gets extremely interesting because uh, what a lot of studies have shown us is that the role of vitamin D in diabetes, there is a direct relationship of low levels of vitamin D with the increased risk of type 2 diabetes and its complications and not 
just diabetes that i need to really uh, focus on that part that not just diabetes but also on complications of diabetes now what is concerning is that lower levels of vitamin d are extremely common in our population especially in india we've noticed that a lot of patients who come here uh, have very low levels of vitamin d and that has a lot to do with the lifestyle as well as uh, uh, you know uh, not being able to get enough uh, sunlight but that is diffuse sunlight not the sunlight that uh, we generally associate sunlight with uh, there is also a study that has tied higher vitamin d levels to a very lower risk of insulin resistance uh, researchers have in fact found that with each additional amount of vitamin d supplement your risk of getting insulin resistance diabetes goes low by a considerable amount now this might also indicate that vitamin d3 is a protective factor in the occurrence of insulin resistance because that is that is a two path uh, process in this one it lowers inflammation and inflammation of course raises your risk of getting insulin resistance and there is a separate pathway uh, which is also under uh, consideration right now uh, so once uh, we are through with that i think we'll have more insight into that as well uh, a stud- it gets even more interesting where there is a study of vitamin d supplementation in pre diabetic rats rats who had elevated levels of insulin resistance so now through various neuroreceptors and uh, uh, chemoreceptors they have found that insulin resistance in rats was lower to an extremely low level only by supplementation of vitamin d another recent study uh, has linked low vitamin d to likelihood of foot ulcers in older people with diabetes now this was one of the first studies to assess vitamin d levels among people who are hospitalized with diabetic foot ulcers what they found is uh, that lower levels of vitamin d were associated with worsening progress uh, prognosis of uh, diabetic foot ulcers and uh, more morbidity as well so all of these studies uh, basically indicate that uh, vitamin d is not only essential in the pathophysiology and the uh, development of diabetes but also in the development of various complications that come with it so hopefully we'll have more studies to understand the relationship between the two uh, but certainly it's a very promising pathway that we are exploring at this moment yes dr rahul uh, thank you for highlighting the expanding role of this crucial nutrient beyond its traditional associations now uh, dr we know that patients with a prolonged or severe vitamin d deficiency can experience symptoms like bone pain fatigue muscle twitching weakness etc but how is vitamin d deficiency being correlated with the risk of chronic conditions like cardiovascular diseases and what emerging mechanism explain this relationship okay now that uh, vitamin d has received widespread attention it's obvious that we have also studied the relationship of that uh, vitamin with the cardiovascular disease because it's one of the most uh, uh, it's one of the diseases that causes the most morbidity and mortality in this world uh, so now again there are a lot of gaps in understanding the exact role of this vitamin in the prevention of cardiovascular diseases but a lot of studies and meta analysis and uh, investigations have suggested that vitamin d again provides a protective uh, effect against cvd uh, now vitamin the vitamin d receptor the vdr is expressed throughout the vascular system uh, many cardiac cells including uh, the uh, myocytes and all of them what they do is they produce one alpha hydroxylase which is converted into the 25 hydroxy vitamin d to into calcitriol which is a natural ligand for vitamin d receptor now calcitriol has been shown to inhibit vascular smooth muscle uh, cell proliferation it regulates the ras system as well the renin angiotensin system decreases coagulation and has a lot of anti inflammatory properties so there is a huge biological plausibility that vitamin d plays a huge role in protecting the uh, cardiovascular uh, sy- uh, system against any disease but the data again is highly insufficient and uh, it is not enough for us to assess the nutritional requirements for the same or how much of vitamin d would be required 
to uh, have a protective effect on all of this now one of the largest studies that was done was the enhance 3 uh, and this suggested that there is a u shaped relationship between 25 hydroxy vitamin d with pro- increased total mortality owing to cvd uh, this is one of the largest studies that have been done in this uh, respect and no other large scale randomized randomized trials uh, have been completed but a lot of them have been going on and the initial observation is that there is a protective effect yeah, and there is a slight correlation between low levels of vitamin d with increased risk of developing cardiovascular disease but all of this is very loose at the moment and a lot of gaps need to be filled okay doctor and moving ahead how does the latest research supports the notion that vitamin d could serve as a potential preventive factor in the development of certain types of cancers now that's a really tricky one especially since everything we do everything we put into our bodies is now considered either a carcinogen or a cancer protective agent so it it's not much of a surprise that uh, vitamin d also has been studied in relation to cancers uh, the results so far have raised the possibility that vitamin d influences cancer risk and development uh experimental studies of cancer cells and of tumors in rodents mostly human studies uh there aren't a lot of human studies but the ones in rodent we found that vitamin d has a lot of uh, uh, biological activities that might slow or prevent the development of cancer uh there was a year long study by the fred hutchinson cancer research center that involved post menopausal women who were taking around 2000 international units of uh, vitamin d on a daily basis what they found is that vitamin people on vitamin d had lower levels of estrogen than the ones who were not and estrogen like we all know is uh, a known risk factor for breast cancer so vitamin d could play an important role there in fact uh, vitamin d could also play a role in estrogen lowering therapy in these patients uh, because it's not only easily available but it's also a cheap way and uh, the side effects of nutritional uh, therapy with uh, and supplement therapy with vitamin d are close to nil now uh, another large trial of vitamin d that was done it's one of the largest trials with, uh, done with vitamin d it was the vital trial now vital trial failed to show any direct effect on overall ca- cancer incidence in a 5 year follow up however a meta analysis of a 10 year follow up uh, through to 2018 they showed that there was a slight reduction it was 13% reduction so it wasn't extremely uh, uh, correlated but there was a slight reduction in cancer mortality over the, the period of 10 years of follow up now there is one more uh, slight correlation with vitamin d and develop cert, uh, people developing certain uh, colorectal cancers but again a lot of research would be needed to corroborate the same but like i said everything nowadays is related to either cancer or uh, you know long term chronic diseases so it is not much of a surprise that vitamin d is also being studied in that respect but uh, like with cvd and like with diabetes we need to fill in a lot of gaps yes doctor thank you for sharing your perspective and uh, doctor now how is vitamin d being integrated into personalized treatment plans considering its potential effects on a range of chronic conditions right now this is something that i've been most surprised with uh what has happened is that all these studies and all these uh population trials have not translated into a proper healthcare plan that integrates vitamin d into your uh daily uh, your treatment protocols or into supplementations and all of that now vitamin d deficiency is an important global health problem that is something that we need to understand uh it not only poses a significant risk for skeletal disorders but a lot of non skeletal disorders as well if not directly then indirectly there is a correlation uh current norms state that around a supplementation of around 800 to 2000 international units per day should be recommended and that is based on your body weight and your di- uh, daily vitamin d intake uh these ids recommended uh, daily allowances uh, they do vary according to older populations and of course pregnant women but more or less this is the range that we follow uh there are a few natural sources of vitamin d uh, most importantly fish is a good source uh, there are other weak sources as well like cheese and milk egg all of them 
uh, but again they are not good sources of vitamin D so at this point in time uh, what i feel is that uh, vitamin D supplementation is the way to go uh, another important element in including vitamin D as a part of the healthcare is the fortification of foods now that is something that is extremely uh, the response to that uh, is extremely underwhelming at the most because uh, the at the political level and at the uh, health levels uh, it hasn't been implemented well enough uh, a lot of things like milk dairy products cereals juices butters the, these could all be fortified uh, with vitamin d which would reduce the load or the burden of vitamin d deficiency and insufficiency in the society in fact a lot of milk formulas for infants and toddlers uh are enriched with vitamin d in a standard way so uh all of these things could be done in india the only uh drawback to fortification would be the acceptability and the cost of these dietary products which will limit their widespread use by the general population uh but again like i said that uh, political commitment and involvement of various ministries as well as the health department uh could help everyone in general to get a better outlook better insight and a better policy on how vitamin d uh level should be regulated uh and it's it's not that difficult i hope that uh, all the research and all the studies that have uh, come to fruition uh translate into a better health policy and a better vitamin d supplementation uh in the society yeah and it's fascinating to learn how this uh, one a once underestimated nutrient is now playing a pivotal role in tailoring treatment strategies for individuals based on their specific health needs and risks so uh, now we have uh, arrived towards the end of the session it was indeed an informative session thank you dr rahul for your insights uh, your insights have added immeasurable value to our understanding Thank you so much Dr Harshita and that uh, thank you uh, to the team of Med Synapse for having me on the show and it was a really good discussion I'm ho- I hope my uh, what I've said uh, goes through in a good way and a lot of people have access to it uh, so thank you so much for having me on the uh, show Thank you doctor and uh, a huge thank you to our audience for tuning in and before we conclude I want to bring your attention to the Med Synapse platform our vibrant hub that's redefining the healthcare landscape it serves as an invaluable resource for professional doctors like you offering opportunities to engage in meaningful discussions connect with expert doctors and be part of advancements in healthcare so explore the medsynapse platform right now to make the most of these remarkable opportunities feel free to drop your comment in the section below if you have any questions will be more than happy to provide you with the answer you see until next time take care keep advancing in your medical journey goodbye